Gilbert. I'm Jakub Kopin, Seaway from Slovenia, and uh, I would like to tell you a couple of things about uh, the crisis, about Europe, and about the renewable energy. And the area I work in is boating, so I'd like you to uh, look at so boats pop in from time to time into my PowerPoints. I'm sorry for that. Uh, we talk about green yachting. Yachting is uh, mainly seen as an area of, uh, uh, of spending our leisure time where green is not really the main topic, but uh, we're now into the new inroads and I think it's worth looking at it. First, I need to say that I think that the name crisis, to name the crisis, is the wrong one because I don't think we're talking about the crisis, we're talking about the deep cultural, political and economical change of the world and we'll have to live with it. So uh, we have to understand that it's not something which will uh, we'll just wait like an earthquake or a flood and things will go away and then we'll go back to normal. Uh, talking about change, uh, this is uh, a shot from uh, the first uh, James Bond movie, uh, Dr. No, which was done in 1962. Uh, I counted uh, the cigarettes Sean Connery lit uh, in that movie was 17. Now in the last uh, three James Bond movies there are still people that smoke but they're all criminals. So it's uh, not a crisis for the smokers, it's a change. Same goes for uh, sexual harassment at work, same goes for racism. Uh, it's uh, Things change, they will not be as they were. Uh, if we look, just look at the uh, economic uh, outlook of the world, we uh, see that uh, things changed. I here uh, took out numbers for uh, the last uh, 1980, the last uh, 35 years, how things look. Uh, 2015 is after tomorrow, so it's not far away from now. You can see that there are countries which stayed the same, USA stayed still on the top, but we must say that uh, at the, in 1980 uh, USA was about three times bigger in uh, purchase power parity uh, in GDP as Japan and in uh, 2015 uh, the uh, numbers of USA will be about 10 to 15 percent higher than China. So things are not the same. Then the countries like Japan, Germany, France, UK, Mexico lost and the, the arrows which you see here, this means down and out. And it doesn't look like they will be very soon again seen on the top 10. Uh, the red uh, countries are uh, the ones which are new appearances on the top 10 list. Of course, we're talking about BRIC. And these are uh, the countries which will go up. I'm trying to say that the economic and also, of course, the political uh, world changed and uh, we have to live with it. I'm sorry, this is not very clearly visible, but I'm trying to say that the West and the East, which are, let's simplify it and call the world the West, like Europe and USA and the East, China and the developing countries, uh, we see that the jobs, that we are in a connecting vessel. So uh, the capital, the, the jobs, and, and uh, the money flows from one side of the world to the other. And of course, it's going in this direction here, because there are no, nothing is stopping here, the things from flowing. And we must accept that the money is what it is. We don't make money. Normally, the uh, people say, or the companies say, we made one million bucks last year. And I always ask them, what did you make them? From, from water, from grass, from mud, you took the money. The money is taken from somebody, it's just displacing from one pocket to another. So <laughs> it means that uh, we are not making money and the money, of course, uh, is flowing in one direction. And of course, the level here is low, the level here is high. Uh, in China, people work a lot for, very, for a small amount of money and we work relatively less for with much higher standard of living, and of course, the things are changing in this direction, and, and uh, we must understand and accept that. Of course, a problem by itself is not a problem. If we don't react to a problem, then we have a real problem. We all know that. Oh, sorry, I'm going to vote. 
we have to change, but change, you know, human nature, change is a pain in the ass. And if we look back in history, all the species, peoples, countries, and of course companies, which fail to adapt to new conditions, just disappeared, which means uh, we have no choice, we have to adapt. If we look at talents or uh, uh, things which can enhance our survival capacity or which can help us to stay uh, uh, alive and to gain our place under the sun, of course we're talking about creativity, innovation, new technologies, speed, flexibility, reactivity, which is maybe one set, sporting spirit and courage, and communication skills. If we are very good at this, our survival capacity or possibilities will be very high. Uh, in Europe, uh, European countries, in some more, some less, but we always talk about we're losing jobs. We saw how the jobs are going to other countries. You know, with every uh, empty container which goes to China, it's not empty. We have our jobs sitting in that container. And of course, we're talking about we have to create new jobs, we have to get unemployment down. How do we do that? We all know that it starts with R&D, which then creates new technologies. The new technologies then create new products and services, and these products and services give a base for new jobs. We know that in Europe we're quite good in R&D, we invest a lot of money in R&D, we come with many new ideas, new technologies, but of course we lack we lack the continuation here. We know on European level that uh, you know, with all the money we spend, uh, we don't come really with new products and services, and that's why we don't create new jobs. So we have to understand that this is the package we need, need to deliver to change things. This is a photograph from Trango Tower of one of our hybrid engineers, uh, 7,200 meters above sea level. There's no mobile phone network there, no helicopter service and so on. So I think this is, uh, this is a big poster we have in our design office, in our engineering office, and uh, we understand that we're in the situation where we have a piece of good news and a piece of bad news. The bad news is that it does not look very nice, the climb, climb which is in front of us, but the good news is we have no other choice. <laughs> Basically, I think we have two scenarios, uh, which are both on an accelerated curve. One is success breeds success, which we all know and like, would like to have. And the other one comes from Latin, uh, abyssus abyssum invocat, uh, which means abyss cause abyss, which means also down you go on an accelerated curve. We have to understand that our homeland is Europe. We are working as a, as a country, as a, a society. We have to, of course, create the necessary uh, feelings in the people, the necessary consciousness. But uh, if we compare our country, Europe, to other countries worldwide, we quickly see that we are different. We are multinational, multi-ethnic, multilingual, multicultural, which means we have much more to show, we are much richer, and this could be the base of a superior creativity. And I, I feel that this is the place under the sun for Europe. Oh, sorry. I don't know how this happens. Okay, so let's look at uh, what we try to do. Uh, uh, Green Line Hybrid, Yacht, uh, is the first production hybrid, which means diesel, electric and solar yacht worldwide. We created it in uh, 2009. We're a, a yacht design engineering and tooling company. Uh, our uh, 40 designers and engineers come from 14 countries. Uh, we do not try to create a melting pot, we don't want to create a seaway uh, culture and uh, force a Frenchman to become uh, a seaway citizen. We let everybody be what he is and that is of course not easy. There are a lot of discussions, there are a lot of conflicts between the cultures, but we think or we are sure that this is the base of uh, superior creativity. Uh, these are some basic facts about uh, the hybrid. We developed it in the crisis times, 2008-2009. We designed and developed a new tank-tested uh, low-drag hull design. We uh, tried to understand how to put together the hybrid uh, drive technology. We integrated the photovoltaic power in it, uh, developed the adequate lithium battery storage. 
which gave uh, the all-time uh, uh, home comfort 220 volt or 110 uh, uh, electricity availability on board. We tried to adapt the design to much higher level of comfort and convenience needed today because we don't feel but we are getting spoiled quite fast and our needs grow from day to day and of course the all the products we use need to adapt with it. You, you could look at the cars 10 or 20 or 30 years ago and how they look today or feel today. Uh, we also try to create higher value on the boat with, and lower running cost. Uh, this is the first boat which has the solar roof, 1.4 kilowatts of solar power. It has a 7 kilowatt electric uh, engine coupled to a 100 uh, kilowatt uh, diesel engine with a clutch and a 12 kilowatt hour uh, lithium polymer battery bank. Uh, what changed in the way the boat is used? We have possibility of the zero emission sailing mode. There's no exhaust smoke, there's no wake. The, our hulls create very, very little lake, uh, wake, virtually minimum. No noise. The fuel consumption per boating season is up to four times less compared to a planing hull. Uh, the boat is friendly to environment, to other boaters, and also to the people which are on the boat. They like it because it's silent, it, does not, it creates much less stress, it creates high level of enjoyment uh, of boating. So people like it and it was accepted uh, very well. This is the 40, the bigger sister of the 33, which means 40 feet, that's 12 meters, and 33 is 10 meters. In uh, three years of... Uh, uh, market uh, presentation of the boat or we tried to sell the boat uh, we started with that in 2010 uh, 11 12 13 we sold 400 boats to 28 countries we're very much surprised that uh, that uh, the boat was accepted so well in very different boating cultures and very different environments very different sea lake and river estuaries worldwide we developed the five uh, models which are seen here. This is the 70. Uh, this is the last slide, so I'm uh, leaving some time for the others. <laughs> but uh, uh, we think that our main achievement of, of uh, changing the boating is attracting people who are standing on the side of boating and were not really boaters, that they came into boating and they saw that boating can be something very pleasant, very agreeable, not only uh, for, for the whole family, not only for the guy or, or uh, an active uh, person, but the whole family can really enjoy uh, boating in a very clean and very green way. And uh, uh, I think this is the start of something, not the end. Uh, we are change, trying to change boating into some activi activity which is seen as very respectful to the environment and to others. Thank you.